Hello and welcome to the Electronics Lab. The two circuits that you see here are summing amplifiers consisting of multiple inputs to an operational amplifier. The differences between these two are subtle, but you can see that the inputs are connected to the non-inverting input on one circuit and to the inverting input on the other circuit. In this video, I'm going to describe how these circuits work, derive equations for the relationships between inputs and outputs, and then provide a couple of examples of the circuit in action. The bottom line for both of these circuits is that the output is based on a weighted sum of the inputs, and the exact weighting applied depends on the resistor values. So I could have an input 1, an input 2, an input 3. The sum of those three values gives me this output voltage. And the inputs to the op amp do not have to be matching in frequencies or phases. They can be arbitrary AC signals. They don't even have to be sine waves. They could be square waves, triangle waves, or even audio signals. In fact, this is exactly how an audio mixer works. You have multiple audio inputs that get added together in an op amp or some other kind of circuitry to give one resulting signal. Let's first take a look at the non-inverting summing amplifier and figure out the relationship between V out, the three V ins, R1, R2, R3, RF, and RG. And when we do this, we are going to assume that the op amp is an ideal one. So that means that no current flows into either the non-inverting or the inverting terminal. And since the open loop voltage gain is infinite and we have negative feedback in the circuit, the voltage at the inverting terminal will be driven to be equal to the voltage at the non-inverting terminal. Now, if you break the non-inverting summing amplifier into two pieces, it kind of looks like a combination of this input configuration plus a non-inverting amplifier. And you should already have a good understanding of both of these pieces, but as a refresher, let's take a closer look at these two parts. First, that input piece. The voltage here at V in is the input to the non-inverting terminal of the op amp. And figuring out what V in is in terms of this V in one, V in two, and V in three is fairly straightforward. We can use one of our circuit analysis methods to figure it out. And the method that comes to mind first is superposition. Figure out what V in is first in terms of V in one, then V in two, then V in three, and then add those three values together. There is a simpler approach though, and that is to use Milman's theorem. And Milman's theorem applies in the specific case where you have a set of parallel source resistor circuits. And it may not be super obvious looking at the circuit like this that we have three parallel source resistor circuits, but I can redraw the circuit. To look like this. And now it should be a more obvious application of Milman's theorem. Now the theorem says that when you have these parallel combinations of sources and resistors, the overall voltage of that parallel combination looks like this. So this is the form of the equation when we assume that R1, R2, and R3 are different resistor values. But the circuit becomes more useful, the summing amplifier circuit becomes more useful, and the analysis becomes easier if all of those resistors are equal to each other. So if they are all equal to each other, the numerator becomes, and the denominator will be three over R. Now these two R terms are going to cancel and you get an input. This V in is equal to the V in one plus V in two plus V in three over three. So now you can see the first clue of why this summing amplifier circuit is a summing amplifier circuit. The input is proportional to the sum of the three individual sources. Now, if we go back and we combine this input circuit with the non-inverting amplifier, we get the non-inverting summing amplifier. And remember, when R1, R2, and R3 are all equal to each other, the voltage at the non-inverting terminal right there is equal to Vn1 plus Vn2 plus Vn3 over 3. And if we want to get the output of the amplifier to be simply equal to Vn1 plus Vn2 plus Vn3, we can set up the non-inverting amplifier to have a gain of 3. And for a non-inverting amplifier, the voltage gain is equal to 1 plus the ratio of the feedback resistor over the resistor that's going to ground, sometimes labeled as R2 and R1. This means that if I pick values for those resistors that give me a value of 2 when I divide them, then I will have a voltage gain of 3. So I could pick an RF of 10K, and then I would need an RG of 5 kilo ohms. That would give me this ratio of 2. 2 plus 1 is 3, giving me this gain of 3. So then the overall voltage gain will be Vn, or the overall output of the circuit will be Vn1 plus Vn2 plus Vn3 over 3, but then multiplied by 3. 
give me an output of VN1 plus VN2 plus VN3 to give me a true summing amplifier. I should also note that I just arbitrarily picked th having three inputs to the summing amplifier, but I could also have more, any arbitrary number of extra inputs here. And the only thing I would need to do is to adjust the gain of the non-inverting amplifier part to give me the proper summing at the output. So for example, if I have five inputs here being applied at the non-inverting amplifier, then that'll be VN1 plus VN2 plus VN3 plus VN4 plus VN5 divided by five. I would need to adjust the gain of my non-inverting amplifier circuit to give me a gain of five so that my output will be the sum of VN1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let's take a look at the other type of summing amplifier. This type of summing amplifier is an inverting amplifier, and you can see that the input is applied at the inverting input of the op amp. And now I want to look closer at this amplifier to understand how it works. So again, I'm going to assume that the op amp is ideal. So no current into either one of the terminals and the inverting and non-inverting terminals are at the same voltage. Since the terminals are at the same voltage, the inverting terminal is going to be at virtual ground. And since no current flows into the inverting terminal, the current through RF will be the same as the sum of the currents through R1, R2, and R3. And to understand the relationship between the output and the inputs, I can rewrite these currents in terms of Ohm's law. So IRF is the current through RF. The voltage across RF is V out minus zero. So V out over RF is that current. IR1, well, the voltage across R1 is zero minus V in, and that's over R1. Zero minus V in one. And R2 is very similar, zero minus V in two over R2. Now I'm gonna get rid of all these zeros. And I will also take the negative sign outside of the expression. So I get V in one over R1 plus V in two over R2 plus V in three over R3. And of course I have this negative sign outside of this expression. And that negative sign is indicating, well, that is the reason that this is an inverting amplifier. Now, if all of the resistors are the same value, then we can just cancel out all of those resistors and we get V out is equal to the negative of the sum of my inputs. So just as a quick example, if these were DC sources and VN1 was three volts, VN2 was four volts, and VN3 was five volts, then the output will be three plus four plus five, which is 12 volts, but it's going to be inverted from that, negative 12 volts. Now let's do a couple of quick examples to help solidify these ideas that we've just gone through. Now let's say R1, R2, R3, and RF are all 10 kilo ohms. RG is five kilo ohms. So that makes the voltage gain of the op amp one plus RF over RG or a gain of three. Now if VN1, VN2, and VN3 are all one kilohertz signals in phase with each other, and VN1 has a one volt peak amplitude, VN2 has a 1.5 volt peak amplitude, and VN3 has a 0 0.5 volt peak amplitude, the output will be 1 volt peak plus 1.5 volt peak plus 0 0.5 volt peak to give me a 3 volt peak output. So I have created that circuit here in LT Spice to get a simulation going. You can see there's my three input voltages, there's my input resistors, there's my feedback resistor and that ground resistor for my non inverting op amp configuration. And you can see the three input waveforms here. And those three input waveforms add up to this kind of turquoise blue overall output waveform, which is this just the sum of those three inputs. And as I mentioned before, those inputs do not have to be the same frequency. They don't have to be in phase. They don't even have to be sine waves. And I've set it up. I've got three different sine waves here, and these are all at different frequencies, different amplitudes, even different phase shifts. So this first one here has an amplitude of one volt, a frequency of one kilohertz. The second one has an amplitude of 0.5 volts, frequency of 5,000 kilohertz. And the third one, frequency of 500 hertz at a 0.7 volt peak. All of those get added together in the summing amplifier circuit to give me a signal that looks like that. No longer sinusoidal. Still the sum of those three inputs though. All right, let's look at another example, this time with an inverting summing amplifier. Now let's say all the resistors are at five kilo ohms. 
VN1, VN2, and VN3 are all in phase with each other. VN1 has a 2 volt peak, VN2 has a 2.5 volt peak, and VN3 has a 1.8 volt peak. Oh yeah, RF also needs to be 5 kilo ohms. So this means V out will be the sum of my three inputs. But let's not forget that this is an inverting amplifier. So my output is going to be out of phase, 180 degrees out of phase with the inputs. And here we have the circuit in LT Spice. You can see my inputs here in red, green, and blue, and my output here in a kind of a turquoise, and it's 180 degrees out of phase with the inputs, and is equal to the sum of those three inputs, and inverted, of course. So a summing circuit is one that sums or adds multiple analog voltage signals together, and in this video we've explored two different ways to build a summing circuit with an op-amp. I hope this has helped with your understanding of summing up amp circuits. You are amazingly diligent and astonishingly intelligent to have made it all the way to the end here. Thank you so much for doing that. See you next time.